Tim, it's all right to start with you. Just how does it feel to, to be back here? Uh, it feels great. It's a little bit surreal. Um, I actually met some friends at the hotel just a minute ago and talking about my time here uh, eight, nine years ago. Um, it was definitely, I definitely have fond memories of my time here, you know. The academy setup was was incredible. Um, everyone really ambitious, um, new thinking, uh, modern modern approach to the game. So it was a it was a great great education that I got uh, during my uh, my youth years. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, you, I get the impression that you feel like you learned a lot in your in your time at the club here, both from I guess the the coaches and also maybe some of the players that you were around. Because it was a kind of great group of youngsters, wasn't it? You had at that time. It was, it was, um, it's incredible how many uh, of the players that actually made it in, in professional football from that group. Uh, usually they say it's, it's one or two uh, from every age group, but I think it's been like 10, 10 or 12 who's, who's still playing prof professionally. Uh, so that just says something about the standard of our uh, academy setup back then. Does the, the place feel familiar or changed a lot? Uh, it was actually quite funny when we landed and, and stepped on the bus and, and started driving. Everyone was, all my teammates were asking me, "So, so where are we? Where, what can you tell us about this place?" And I, I couldn't, I couldn't recognize anything. <laughs> well, we came, we came a little bit closer to the to the city, and then I could see that, uh, yeah, this was definitely Southampton. Um, how, how have you enjoyed sort of seeing the progress that, that they've made, particularly in the last few years? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been plenty of ups and downs for the club. Um, of course, being down in in League One, uh, battling financial issues, um, but it's great to see that they're back in in Premier League where they belong. Um, from an outside perspective, I, f I feel it's a it's a role model club uh, in the way they conduct themselves, um, the youth players that they bring through, the the football philosophy they have under Ronald Koeman is is also uh, very attractive. Um, Nice stadium, a good set of fans. Um, I mean, it's it, it really is a, a great club. You must know Dusan Tadic quite well too, I imagine, don't you? Yeah, he was a good friend of mine in, in Groningen in, in Holland. Uh, spent two years together. Uh, I know him we very well. I know his football qualities. Um, so for me, it's not a surprise that he's he's playing week in, week out, week out in, in Premier League. So how you know how hopeful are you in in this tie? Um, you know, not just tomorrow night, but as a whole progressing past Southampton. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a two-legged tie. Um, we are hopeful. Uh, we're confident. We've had a great start to the domestic season. Um, I mean, we've we've overcome our disappointment against Apoel Nicosia, and uh, I feel we have a have a decent chance against Southampton. The gap between the leagues are big. Um, Southampton are the clear favourites, but. Uh, and I think we've seen plenty of underdogs overcoming bigger oppositions before, so why not us? Mm. Thank you. Tim, uh, Ronald Koeman says that physically you will provide a bigger challenge than Vitesse Arnhem. What sort of football can we expect to see from your team? Um, yeah, I mean, we have a, have a physical presence in our team. Um, we've often been dangerous in set pieces. We have some big lads and we, we don't shy away from a tackle, definitely not. But well, we can also play football. Uh, I think our new coach has a has a very good idea of how we want to build up, and we're we're trying to to move maybe a little bit from only a physical perspective to to more of a football uh, football side. And uh, his his ideas are really really nice to see. I think we're coming along great in that in that aspect. Once you got through a, a round of the Champions League qualifying, you've got regular experience in the Europa League and the UEFA Cup for the last 10, 15 years. So how much of an advantage is that for you now? How much do you learn from those games coming into a match like this? You do learn and, and the club's aim is, is always, has always been to play in, in Europe. Uh, we're not just satisfied with being a good team in the domestic league. Uh, we want to progress and, and get, getting into a European group stage would be a, a, a huge thing for this club and for the players as well. Uh, the experience that we got from the last, for, for the from the previous season, has helped us. Um, hopefully, we can use that tomorrow. Obviously, your owner uh, has links with Brentford and it owns that club as well. Everyone thinks it's a fascinating story that's unfolding. What's going on? What's what's happened at FCM that we can learn from 
with regards, say, watching Brentford or what you've done that goes well for the club and what he wants to do? Well, I'm not I'm not familiar with all the details, but uh, just his approach to the to the game is a little bit different than than what you're used to. Um, for me personally, football can a bit be a bit conservative and grey sometimes. You know, most of the clubs doing the same thing. Uh, what we're trying to do at Brentford and, and Mitchell is is looking at football from a different perspective. Um, he's got he's using a lot of stats and, and mathematical. Uh, uh, formulas to to maybe find the right player. Um, so he's, he's he's definitely coming from a from a different part of the world and and coming with you know new eyes and and hopefully helping us in the in the right direction. First of all, I want to say whenever that draw was going on, and I thought it was Southampton. Maybe a, it's a team from maybe the best league in the world. We know the chances for us going forward to the. Group stage will be very difficult. Although what Jim just said, we had a good start of the season, so we come with a lot of confidence. So of course we hope for, and I think we have a chance. Although maybe everybody will think it is very little. Well, um, what would kind of represent? I know, I guess you know, maybe coming here to to win ideally, but what what would represent sort of the kind of minimum good result for you heading back to Denmark? I would say I'm, I'm pleased to start away uh, because I think that will give us maybe the best chance for for getting a good result tomorrow. Although we know over two games it will be very difficult, but maybe we they don't know that much about us. I think maybe we know a bit more about them because in Denmark the Premier League is is a big league. Everybody follow that league. Um, so hopefully that will get us a good result and hopefully we can score a goal. I think that will be necessary for us to to achieve our goals that come to the stage group. How big a statement do you think it would be when you know everybody over here is very interested in the model that you guys use and the things that you're doing? If you were to, to beat a Premier League team and advance into the group stages, how big a statement would that be about what you are trying to do at Michelin? That would be big. That would be huge, uh, not not just for us, but especially for us, but also for for the for the teams in Denmark. That we could show everybody that we are on the right way. And uh, just finally, for me, is, is there any sort of injuries that you're dealing with at the moment, or, or players? No, I think everybody is where they should be, and uh, we have a lot of good players, and some of those who are very good has to be stay at home. We are 90 guys here. And we still have some good lads staying at home, so I think we are where we should be in the moment, ready for tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, welcome. What do you think of Southampton, the playing style, the way they play? I love the play, the, the way they, they're going to play. Uh, Kuman's way of playing is, is I wouldn't say the, the way I want to play, but, uh, but I like to see them play. Um, they want to build up from behind, they have very good Strikers are least offensive player. The f the four they have up front are very good. Uh, so I like the way they, they played. I've followed them for a couple of years, and I think they have been doing well. Well, so I look forward to the game tomorrow. I imagine you probably quite like the video against Everton as well. <laughs> <laughs> Things you could probably spot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I like that uh, that much because uh, I think maybe the team is on a bit more pressure now. Uh, if they have won uh, these, this game, they have been maybe uh, a bit more relaxed than they are now. Uh, but of course, saw something that we maybe could uh, use as well in the game tomorrow. You said uh, it's not the way you want to play. How do you want to play? Yeah, like Tim just said, uh, the team has a, a DNA uh, in the last couple of years by playing a lot of... Uh, direct balls, a lot of uh, physic, a lot of uh, set pieces uh, and I don't want to step away from that but maybe put some more thing into the team that we are not th that easy to, to, to read as a team uh, so we can maybe play um, and both at both in the, in the league at home but also in, in these uh, international games uh, that's what I want to progress in with the team. Is there a particular Southampton player you worry is the biggest threat to you? I think they have a lot of good players that we have to take care of if we, uh, if we should have a chance. I don't want to point somebody out. I think they have a very good team.
Yes, do you feel that um, you're getting enough out of Pyong Sisto and uh, do you think all the transfer talk about him has affected him in some way? He's a young player and he's not looked, you know, the way he, he used to in last season. Do you think as a coach you've got enough about him? Honestly, no. Especially not the, the last uh, couple of games. Uh, in Denmark, we talk a lot about this X factor, uh, and I think he he, he has that. Uh, I don't think he have been shown that uh, in the last couple of games. Yeah, maybe in some moments, but during uh, 90 minutes, we have not seen enough enough of him, uh, both offensive and defensive wise. If that's uh, is depending on the the talk about transfers, transfers and stuff like that, I don't know. Uh, but there is a lot of talk about him. I know that for sure. You talked about, do you think he feels under pressure that everybody's looking at him expecting something extra from him? I've had a lot of talks with him uh, and he knows what everybody expects from him and uh, maybe especially him s himself. Uh, but I think he he's very grown up, in although in that age he is. But it will, I think, uh, infect uh, everybody uh, if you're going to hear all the, uh, these talks about where you're going and what is the price and these big clubs and stuff like that. Uh, but I think he is handling it all right.